All right, over to you, Matt. Okay, great. Thank you, Shannon and the town board. Thank you for uh, uh, making time for us to uh, go over the recommendations that the committee has been working on diligently uh, for just slightly over a year now. I'm going to uh, share my screen because I have a short uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so let me do that. All right, does everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So, okay. So uh, again, my name is Matt Rogers. I'm a senior planner with LaBerge Group. Uh, we've been leading this project uh, in partnership with uh, Cena Cutson, and also on our consultant team has been uh, CLA Site, um, uh, who's provided uh, design uh, input uh, for recommendations at Freer Park uh, and Lighthouse Park. Uh, the committee, uh, well staffed, uh, the majority of it is the existing Waterfront Advisory Board uh, that's uh, charged with implementing the local waterfront plan and reviewing projects along the shoreline. And that's been supplemented uh, to add some uh, missing skill sets uh, during uh, that process. And it, as uh, the supervisor mentioned, uh, this uh, project is partially being funded by uh, the New York State DC Hudson River Estuary Program. And uh, they've been a great partner with the town and they've also uh, awarded the town a grant to uh, conduct prop, uh, boundary and topographic surveys of Freer and Lighthouse Park and uh, structural engineering evaluation of the uh, bulkhead at Freer Park as well. So uh, they continue to be a great partner uh, with the town. The uh, purpose of the study, uh, this is actually our third public presentation. The purpose of, of tonight's meeting is to review the recommendations. The overall purpose of the study obviously is to uh, enhance waterfront access for all ages and abilities uh, to the Hudson River and the tidal portion of the Roundout Creek because this project is being funded uh, by the Hudson River Estuary. Uh, we're looking at the tidal portion when the town begins their local waterfront revitalization plan update, we'll look at the entire length of the Roundout Creek and down the Walker River for uh, new recreational uh, uh, access opportunities. So obviously we're looking at right now, primarily existing parks, both town parks and Scenic Hudson uh, preserves uh, along the waterfront, looking to identify new recreational amenities uh, at these different parks and preserves, new trail con connections, both land and water trail connections. And we're also beginning to plan and design for the anticipated sea level rise uh, in the impacts of increased severity of storms. So the five areas that, that we looked at as part of this project are Slatesburg Park, uh, George uh, Freer Memorial Beach, Freer Park and Lighthouse Park. Those are all town parks. Uh, Esopus Meadows Preserve and Black Creek Preserve, uh, which are scenic cuts and properties. Uh, we were hoping to wrap this up by around the first of the year um, and or uh, slightly thereafter. Uh, things took a little bit longer and then we had to all take a slight break because of, of uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, but we're uh, off and running and a draft has been released uh, and it's available on the town website. But as you can see with the effort to date, the, the committee in the town has is, is, uh, done a significant amount of work, multiple site visits, uh, including site visits, not only with the committee, uh, but uh, with uh, DEC uh, and uh, with RCAL to review uh, opportunities to improve the ADA accessibility uh, at all of the parks. And that was a very uh, helpful uh, set of site visits with them. We also attended a New York State DEC pre-application meeting to get a uh, jump on any potential uh, permitting needs uh, that might be required for any of the improvements. And to date, the committee's met eight times specifically on this project uh, and our hats off to them and everybody that's uh, volunteered their time uh, uh, to make this project a reality. So the report uh, again, which is on the town website, if you go to the uh, town's projects and under the riverfront access study. Uh, essentially, it's organized as a fairly similar 
uh, planning document. Uh, we uh, provide an overview of the, the planning process, uh, the meetings that were held, the stakeholder coordination site visits. We reviewed past relevant plans to identify recommendations that have previously been identified uh, and looked at uh, whether or not they've been implemented and should they continue to be uh, uh, progressed if they haven't. Uh, existing conditions evaluation, a detailed evaluation of, of each and every one of the parks and preserves. Obviously a set of recommendations for, for each and then an implementation plan. Uh, and to help the public review uh, the plan, the full document is available online along with a, a separate document, which are just the recommendations. The full document's a pretty large file, 20 megabytes, uh, and uh, sometimes that may not be feasible to download, as well as all the maps and concept plans are uh, available as individual files uh, for everybody to take a look at. So we'll just jump right into it. Uh, the first area is, is Slatesburg Park. Uh, and just uh, for reference purposes, uh, this is the, the Roundout Creek. And uh, this is the uh, driveway into the park. Uh, this is the boat launch area. So as part of our uh, update, uh, we were looking to obviously make improvements at the boat launch site. Uh, so one of the bigger issues that we've heard is that because with the one dock there, which is about 40 feet in length, it tends to get uh, congested uh, when people are both launching and retrieving their boats. You can really only get uh, one or maybe two boats docked there temporarily. So looking to add a, about a 40 foot aluminum dock to make an L-shaped, which would increase the temporary docking. Uh, these would not be long-term docking. It's just to, uh, for the period of, of grabbing your trailer or parking it um, during the launching and recovery process. This will also provide additional room for a uh, canoe kayak launch that would be ADA accessible. And overall, the full dock system in the gangway would have to be upgraded to meet ADA accessibility. There's a concrete step um, that precludes that uh, as you get onto the uh, gangway and tow guards are missing as well. So we've looked into that uh, and, and making a recommendation to uh, uh, consider those improvements uh, as funding becomes available. Uh, some of the big other issues that have been identified, obviously if you've driven into and out of Slatesburg Park, it's a, basically a single road and with a slight bend to it, which makes it difficult to see oncoming traffic so in meeting with DEC, they, they stated that one uh, option that would be feasible, uh, expanding the driveway would not be because of the wetland impacts, but trimming the uh, reeds, the wetland vegetation along the left-hand side as you drive in, uh, trimming them back a little bit uh, will actually open up a full line of sight uh, down the driveway so everybody can see who's coming. And then uh, perhaps create a, uh, a small pull-off uh, at the entrance, uh, and that's down uh, just after the uh, Central Hudson uh, gas line infrastructure. There's an area there. They're actually doing some work uh, this summer there, and which may kind of lead uh, to the ability for the town to uh, uh, actually lay down some gravel and create a temporary pull-off uh, that will allow uh, more than one vehicle to pass. Other improvements would be to, to reconfigure the parking lot and put down actual painted lines. Granted, it is a gravel surface, and those would have to be uh, uh, continually uh, uh, ma uh, maintained. Uh, and the recommendation is for the town to go out and kind of test different or, uh, orientations. But the big issue here is trying to get uh, the trailer, uh, uh, the, the vehicles with trailers, uh, once they drop their boats off to uh, park on an angle and in a more organized fashion. Uh, once somebody parks uh, kind of in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, a strange angle anywhere in that uh, parking lot, it tends to really uh, gum things up and it becomes less efficient. So looking at uh, designating those parking areas for trailers and then uh, overflow and, and for cars as well. 
designating an ADA parking space right next to the fishing platform and maintaining a, 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 a clear path onto that platform, which is ADA accessible. So putting an ADA van spot at that location is ideal. Because the boat launch is again, primarily used for launching trailer boats, uh, launching, hand launching canoes and kayaks can become difficult and the, the launch can become uh, crowded. So putting in a, a new soft launch, uh, gravel based launch uh, to the left or west of the ramp is also being recommended and long-term uh, improved maintenance of the trails uh, throughout the park as well uh, is, is recommended. Uh, they haven't been um, necessarily maintained well over the years. Uh, and the recommendation both in the comprehensive plan and through this process was that it'd be great to get those trails back and maintained uh, uh, every year. And maintaining trails can be quite a, a manpower effort. So one of the recommendations included in the report is to uh, consider maybe a volunteer uh, program, uh, let's say Friends of Slatesburg Park that could uh, go in and, and help keep the trails clear of, of down vegetation, et cetera, and, and clean up uh, the garbage. Um, so that's a quick overview of the improvements uh, at Slatesburg. So we're heading south down the Hudson to the next town park, and that's Freer Park. Uh, and just uh, by way of orientation here again, uh, Hudson River here, the pavilion, uh, J Street, uh, the entrance here, um, and uh, the existing kind of soft launch and the bulkhead right here. So there's this particular park probably has the majority of the improvements being recommended. So I'll start along the shoreline here. Uh, we have an informal launch at this point. Uh, the town has been laying down some gravel, I've uh, been grading that. Uh, and that's fantastic. Uh, ultimately, it would become a, a, a truly formalized launch uh, that uh, primarily for hand launching of canoes, kayaks, and other small water, watercraft, non-motorized, uh, zero emissions is, is the uh, park's uh, recommended official policy. Uh, going down the shoreline here, the other major issue is, is the bulkhead. So if you've uh, been to the park, you've noticed that the bulkhead has sections that are deteriorating. And a lot of this has to do with a combination of wave action coming over the bulkhead and then pooling behind. But also that's combined with the storm water that's flowing, sheet flowing off the, the driveway. Uh, of course, the entire topography of this park slopes down to the river. Uh, and while there are a few stormwater uh, grates throughout the parking lot, there's a good fair amount of water that cheap flows down and starts to pull back behind the bulkhead and uh, has uh, caused a lot of erosion concern. So this summer, uh, there will be a structural analysis, as I said, uh, with the goal of hopefully uh, demonstrates that the bulkhead can be uh, repaired and stabilized uh, and doesn't have to be replaced and that to supplement that and also to get towards a more natural shoreline condition without having to remove the bulkhead would be to place riprap in select locations and to intersperse uh, natural uh, shoreline vegetation uh, for, for a few reasons that will help deal with the stormwater uh, impacts, create a more natural shoreline. And this would be in concert with uh, stormwater improvements throughout the park, uh, looking to uh, improve areas that are sheet flowing, uh, direct those uh, maybe to rain gardens and some other areas away from the back edge uh, of the bulkhead. There is a uh, informal parking lot, uh, J Street, uh, that tends to become uh, pretty rutted out and muddy uh, when it rains, and particularly in the, in the spring. So the recommendation is to make that a formal parking lot, preferably Pervious, uh, not impervious. Uh, we don't want to increase the amount of impervious uh, uh, surfaces in the park. Add an ADA parking spot and also put in locking bollards here. Uh, there tends to be situations where people remove the bollards and drive right down to the shoreline. Uh, there's a couple issues with that. It, it ruts out the, the lawn because it is a hill that goes down in there. Uh, other issues, this is where the town launches 
uh, and refuels Chester, uh, which is the harvesting machine that takes care of the uh, water chestnuts. And if there's vehicles down there, it makes it almost impossible to uh, properly service Chester. Uh, we also, the town also would prefer not to have vehicles driving around the park. So putting in those locking bollards uh, has been recommended. The full parking lot, uh, and it could be upgraded in stages, but primarily the, the southern part uh, down here uh, is in really poor condition, uh, chipping, uh, potholes, just chunks of asphalt sloughing off. So that needs to be repaired. And we've been kind of toying around with different ways to improve circulation and also the stormwater flow. So one recommendation was kind of a turnaround or a roundabout. Uh, and you know, while we, we're still showing that as a recommendation, we recognize that uh, it's gonna have to be uh, tested out to ensure proper circulation for boats that uh, may have trailers. Uh, for canoes, kayaks, uh, et cetera, uh, and also just uh, the overall safety of that. So a recommendation would be to kind of test out the optimal size of a turnaround area uh, and, and uh, try to agree on that. Not a necessarily a requirement, but it's just one way to kind of improve that and also break up the view as you're coming down into the park because right now it's a big sea of asphalt, uh, not necessarily ideal. Um, from a visual standpoint. There's a the bathroom that's essentially in the middle of the parking lot that's being recommended to be removed and a uh, new one relocated uh, in the park area that improves the safety uh, because it clearly doesn't make sense to have uh, children going through the parking lot to uh, get to the bathroom. And secondly, it's not ADA accessible, very small uh, at that. Uh, the entrance way, being recommended to be widened, not necessarily the pavement, not necessarily the asphalt, but the uh, the gate and the bollards associated with that, uh, which is creates kind of a neck down and uh, an and access issue, uh, limiting uh, the turning radii and people coming in and out. Also, the signs there can be consolidated uh, and cleaned up, and the vegetation along the driveway needs to be maintained uh, throughout the year. Uh, as there's been uh, incidents where boats can get damaged or vehicles get damaged, et cetera. Uh, up on the hill here is the former lifeguard restroom uh, shack, whatever you may want to call that. That's unused. Uh, visually, it's kind of an eyesore. Recommend to get rid of that and create a, a, a sheltered seating area that connects in with the existing grass trail that leads to Tilden Street, uh, which provides a nice elevated view uh, and you can line that with uh, uh, seating areas uh, as well. And the playground uh, being recommended to be upgraded to an ADA surface and the addition of ADA uh, compliant accessible uh, playground equipment as well. And uh, lastly, a, a long-term vegetation maintenance program is also re recommended. Last year, we lost a few trees to storms uh, shoreline vegetation is critical for uh, addressing flooding, maintaining the shoreline, uh, reducing the erosion. So looking to make sure that sufficient amount of vegetation is maintained for that. Also for shade, because that's an, a big, uh, an important part of the park experience. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the shoreline vegetation uh, is recommended to be installed uh, in this area. And the southern shoreline here uh, has actually begun to become naturally reclaimed uh, by uh, the river. And this area is being recommended to be uh, off limits for any type of major disturbance. Obviously, people can access the shoreline there. It's popular for fishing. Uh, but if you've been down in there, the natural shoreline vegetation has, has really started to become rooted. And DEC identified that and recommended that, if possible, that could be uh, kept uh, not only not disturbed by the, uh, any future development there, but also uh, not cut. Uh, no, no reason to get in there with the weed whacker, et cetera. Um, the next slide here uh, just shows a cross section of a proposed boardwalk as well. Uh, you know, that is, is a long term recommendation that was identified uh, throughout this process. Uh, but I'm providing this to show you how we're looking to integrate the 
uh, riprap and the shoreline vegetation on the back side of the wall, and also rain gardens uh, between the parking lot and the shoreline in select areas to really reduce that uh, runoff. Uh, this is an example of, of the uh, uh, bulkhead uh, that is uh, deteriorating and, and having some ongoing erosion issues. This is the southern shoreline, just kind of giving you an idea of how that vegetation is becoming uh, reestablished. And the old uh, bulkhead there uh, that uh, uh, has really become uh, reclaimed uh, over the years. Uh, so next uh, is, uh, is Free Your Park, and uh, actually I've been asked to uh, stop now for any questions uh, now that I've gone through two of the parks. So I'll open that up if there are questions. Uh, I want to go back to the first uh, item that you're covering, Claysburg. Sure. Um, I think one of the problems we have with that, that place right now is during fishing season, there's already too much boat traffic and such. Wouldn't putting an additional dock just encourage more usage and more traffic? Well, that, that, man, that's a good question. That's along the same lines as, you know, people wanting to widen, widen a road to uh, uh, make it safer, carry more, uh, more traffic. In this case, you know, clearly, you know, we understand uh, as the process went along, more and more concerns about uh, the traffic down there, both during the day and, and after hours, and that's factored into that uh, concern. This is more along the lines of, of not necessarily increasing capacity, because the parking lot can't be increased. Uh, it is what it is. But it's really the safety and the convenience of the voters is, is the, this, the reason for this recommendation in that it provides additional opportunities to uh, come ashore and, and in a more organized fashion. And at the same time, it gives more room for a ADA accessible canoe kayak launch attached to that. Um, so just like with all these recommendations, they're all, all they are recommendations and uh, the majority of them, you know, will need some type of funding and investment uh, to, to go forward. So that will have to be factored in uh, to decisions as well. Why are you recommending relocating the kiosk? Well, the kiosk is in the middle of the island, um, which tends to be uh, almost inaccessible when there's cars parked uh, uh, facing uh, the island or facing the river. And uh, it's almost not even uh, known that it's there. And if we were to re relocate it, uh, not necessarily on the shoreline, but uh, cl closer to uh, the, the actual launch uh, and, and the fishing pier, it'd be more usable. You can get to it. It's right at a, a trail, the, the main trailhead. Uh, and, uh, you know, a new design could be uh, established as opposed to just re relocating the existing one that might fit better in, in that location. And the current uh, kayak launch is not ADA, ADA accessible? Uh, the kayak launch is ADA accessible. However, when it's attached to the dock, which is not ADA accessible, technically it, it, it becomes uh, not. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it's not useful. So if there are people with some motor skill issues, uh, as long as they're able to get down the gangway onto the dock, uh, then it does provide an opportunity to use it. And obviously, it it's, can be utilized by anybody, and it's just an easier way to get in and out of your canoe or kayak if you're uh, not used to that, if you're a beginner, or if you just prefer an easier way to launch. Um, uh, I will also say that the gangway uh, is, is at a slope uh, that exceeds ADA requirements as well. So that adds to the uh, numerous issues that would have to be addressed for this area to become uh, fully ADA accessible. Uh, just another issue to consider. So if, if we did not want to put in an additional dock, modifications could be made to that current dock to make it ADA accessible, correct? Right. Uh, you, 
exactly. So the, the recommendations are provided uh, as, you know, a menu in which, you know, as, as need be, as, as required, as the funding is available, we, you can make those improvements. You wouldn't have to necessarily add the, the, the aluminum dock, but you could uh, uh, make the existing dock a little more ADA accessible and improve uh, and, and get rid of that uh, two inch step up at the concrete step there. You can uh, create a ramp. Uh, it may not be officially ADA accessible, but it would uh, make be a significant improvement. Uh, and the town isn't required to provide ADA accessible launches, but one of the big issues of, uh, or priorities of this project is to find ways in which the town could, could begin to get towards that uh, uh, full ADA accessibility. And finally, my last comment is I appreciate your uh, remarks on the park. Thank you. Okay, do you, do you have questions on Freer Park? No? Okay. okay. Oh, go ahead. I love the design. The design, I think, is the best I've seen. It looks nice on the picture. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it looks like that in real life. <laughs> I think the circle in the middle is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it's it's come a long ways from the initial concept that we kind of kicked around during the comprehensive plan process, and and uh, we we think it looks looks great. Obviously, it'll take numerous years to implement, uh, particularly now uh, with uncertainty in some uh, the grant programs. Uh, but it's set up in a way that the town can start uh, clicking off different improvements, uh, particularly low hanging fruit ones, in which uh, doesn't require investments. Um, uh, out of pocket. So uh, move on to Lighthouse Park now. This is uh, another town park and similar to Slatesburg. It's under a conservation easement with Scenic Hudson, was originally a Scenic Hudson property. Uh, it's a relatively small park directly adjacent to Asopus Meadows Preserve. Uh, kind of the ma two major issues uh, with uh, uh, Lighthouse Park uh, one being the, the parking lot, the dotted line shows the outline of the current parking lot, uh, which provides parking for maybe five to eight uh, vehicles, no official ADA parking. Uh, it's pretty tight to turn around, back up, and once all the stalls are, are full, people just tend to park wherever. Uh, also, the entrance is narrow, and the pavement uh, is certainly in need of, of repair. So the recommendation would be to uh, expand it uh, just slightly uh, and could either be uh, uh, remain pervious, although the recommendation would be to uh, remove the existing uh, asphalt and then have it be a, uh, a pervious uh, gravel uh, driveway. Uh, two ADA spots, including a van uh, spot, uh, that would have an ADA accessible, most likely a stone dust, uh, crushed stone path that would lead not only to a future sheltered seating area possibly, but also this path uh, that leads is to an existing connection to a Sopus Meadows Preserve that uh, goes over a, a drainage area with a, uh, a small wooden bridge. Uh, so that would provide a nice ADA accessible connection uh, to Isopus Meadows, which has a, a stone dust path that is ADA accessible that leads to their pavilion and the parking lot and their other trails. Uh, the other area of improvement is along the shoreline here. Uh, the, I'll go on to the next slide here to give you an idea here. So if you haven't been there, uh, there's a couple things. One, First thing is the shoreline is eroding, so that's just the one part of it there. So you have to kind of step down some areas to some four feet uh, in, in elevation uh, and clearly not accessible uh, uh, by uh, most people, particularly if you're lugging a canoe, kayak, or a rowboat. And this is a location, too, where uh, the volunteers that run Chester uh, put in a rowboat to get out to Chester when it's uh, uh, stationed up, off of uh, Lighthouse Park in, in 
Nisopus Meadow shoreline. Uh, and dragging that uh, down the shoreline and over these rocks uh, is, is quite difficult. And one of the reasons for this erosion, uh, years ago there was an in-water uh, sculpt art sculpture that was, uh, was conducted, uh, and we believe they took the rocks from the shoreline, put them in the river. The river obviously is very dynamic, and those rocks have been moved all over the place. The shoreline has eroded and these rocks create a, an obstacle for uh, getting in and out of the water. And a lot of them too, you can't see, uh, except that at low tide. So looking to uh, pull those back and reestablish a, a nice shoreline edge uh, using uh, different filter fabrics, such as coconut core logs or other natural biodegradable uh, fabrics that uh, you would, uh, install with the rocks and then backfill that uh, with vegetation uh, and then eventually that becomes rooted uh, as a natural shoreline uh, and to improve access uh, the other recommendation would be to create a, uh, a gravel uh, uh, hand launch uh, area so for canoes kayaks other small non-motorized craft, including the rowboat that is stored here at, at uh, Lighthouse Park, provide easier access. It would not be officially ADA, uh, but the goal would be to provide a fairly stable uh, uh, shallow slope down uh, to the, the water uh, to launch boats, but also to access for fishing. Uh, there's another trail over here uh, with the goal of improving that uh, and maintaining the vegetation uh, because we know some people will launch their boats there, but also there's a very popular fishing area here as well. And uh, lastly, uh, this is in partnership with Scenic Cutson. Uh, this vegetation that's in between the two parks, this is uh, Sopus Meadows here, and this is their pavilion. A lot of this is scraggly vine, some invasive vegetation, and the idea would be to uh, thin that out uh, uh, to provide uh, better visual connection, uh, improve uh, view uh, between the two parks, because uh, if you go to one, you may not realize that the other one ex exists if you're not from here. Also, it's sharing the resources of the water access and the picnic tables, uh, and also enhances the views uh, to the river as well. And uh, that's primarily the, the series of recommendations here. One last thing is there, there is an old uh, raised septic field in this area where I'm highlighting that was once used uh, as part of the uh, previous education center uh, at Asopus Meadows uh, that's no longer in use. Uh, but if you wonder why there's a mound, a, a green mound there, that's that's because of the old septic field. And that may have to be removed as part of the parking lot expansion uh, and if a shelter is proposed in that area. Um, otherwise that can remain as is uh, with no concerns. So I'll stop there before going on to Sopus Meadows. If there's any questions? Why would you have to remove the field if uh, it's not well, it depends on how far the uh, the lines are. We weren't able to confirm uh, when we were out there. Obviously, the uh, Lighthouse Park is going to have a survey done, uh, and uh, one of the goals too is to be able to uh, try to find out the the extent of that leach field, and if the lot can be expanded without. Uh, starting to get into the slope there, that's preferable. Obviously, the less work we have to do, uh, the better. And the, there's plenty of, of area to locate a shelter. It doesn't necessarily have to be on top of that area, although that was identified because it's a nice open area. Um, but we're not looking to do more work if we don't have to. So it really depends on the extent of those lines and uh, where the toe of the slope is in relation to the parking lot expansion. Hey, Matt. Yes. Do you have a pavilion? Is that University is a pavilion picnic area? 
Yes. I mean, we've uh, tossed around different ideas, uh, key, uh, uh, um, uh, gazebo or a, a lean-to type thing or like a smaller version of the pavilion that's over at Asopus Meadows. Um, there was really no consensus among the group. Some would rather not have another structure there. Uh, some would like to have some type of shelter. Um, there is no shelter. And if the pavilion is being used uh, at Asopus Meadows, and people need to get out of the elements. It may not be a bad idea to have that. But it never really rose to like a high priority for, Asop or for Lighthouse Park at this point. Uh, but similar to replacing the kiosk, uh, which is uh, in poor shape, which originally was done by a local Boy Scout troop. Um, the idea here would be to look for partners and stakeholders to help build and, and uh, share the costs and, and any of these, you know, structural improvements. All right, should we move on? Yes. All right. So with Sopus Meadows, uh, for the most part, there wasn't a lot of, uh, of improvements uh, that we initially found, but as throughout the process and over the last two months, there was a few more things that uh, the committee identified as well as seen at Cutson. Uh, uh, one being uh, along the shoreline, uh, there's been some trail er er erosion of the blue trail uh, and uh, looking at ways to improve that. Uh, again, through a similar process of using the coconut core logs or other type of of a biogradable, biogradable material uh, to reinforce that shoreline or even actually uh, relocating uh, the trail uh, if, if the uh, shoreline can't be sufficiently stabilized uh, for safety. Uh, some of you may be aware that Tina Cutson owns property to the south uh, of uh, the official uh, Sopus Meadows. Uh, so I don't have the full area on the map here, but this green line indicates the uh, the property boundary, but just to the south of that, uh, Cena Cutson owns a similar size and acreage uh, to Sopus Meadows uh, that has not officially been made part of, of, of Sopus Meadows, but throughout the process, we always came back to, you know, it'd be great if, if additional trails could be constructed and uh, Again, this would be uh, a project in which Scenic Hudson can partner with the town and other stakeholders, the scouts, uh, et cetera, uh, to assist in, in constructing the trails. Trail construction is, is quite a big undertaking. Uh, and Scenic Hudson has a lot of parks and preserves. And if this isn't something that's very important to the town, which it certainly is to the committee, uh, and those that love the hike uh, and would like additional opportunities at Asopus Meadows, this could be a great uh, joint venture uh, in the future. Uh, as I mentioned before, thinning out that vegetation uh, between the two parks. Uh, this is the existing uh, trail on Asopus Meadows that leads to Lighthouse Park right there, the existing bridge, which is actually ADA accessible, has tow guards. Uh, but this area here, some of this vegetation could be thinned out to really improve the, uh, the connection and the visibility uh, between the two parks. Uh, this is the day pavilion, so if you've been down there, uh, it's used by an educational uh, program that Cena Cutson puts on. Uh, and uh, when it's not being utilized, uh, it is available to the public, uh, but they're looking to improve uh, its overall uh, attractiveness and accessibility by adding more picnic tables around the pavilion and on the pavilion. Uh, that the public can use uh, uh, when it's not in, in use by uh, the Tideline program, which is the, uh, the children's educational program. And uh, the last one is to evaluate uh, the, the feasibility of formalizing uh, fishing access trails uh, uh, from the Blue Trail. Uh, there's a handful of, of unofficial uh, paths that go down to the river uh, and uh, provide uh, access for fishing. Swimming is not allowed at, at, at Asopus Meadows, so there are obviously concerns. Uh, they don't want to in, uh, encourage uh, water access at this site. Um, uh, however, uh, you know, there has been suggestions to formalize these, so they're gonna look into that, uh, maybe test it out, and also evaluate potential impacts on the natural resources uh, and the ability to properly in, enforce the rules there. So again, this is an opportunity to increase that access 
uh, for not only uh, canoers and kayakers, but also anglers and those that just want better views of the water. So I'll stop there before moving on to the final one, Black Creek Preserve. All right. Obviously, we can go back to, to any and all of them. So this is Black Creek Preserve. The majority of the improvements uh, are at the, the new area uh, that the uh, Scenic Hudson has acquired. It's been a few years now uh, since they uh, acquired this uh, property, uh, Winding Brook. And I'll just zoom in here. So uh, they've done a significant amount of work uh, out here. It used to be a cottage colony, if you've been out there. Uh, they removed all of the older structures. They've, they've uh, retained the existing single family dwelling and perhaps that could be repurposed as a, a place for a writer and residency uh, in conjunction with John Burroughs. Did consider that being a caretaker area, et cetera, but uh, you know, the amount of work that might be required to go into that uh, to uh, get it fully seasonalized um, uh, might be cost prohibitive. Uh, so the road that goes out there now, there's a gate up if you've been down to Black, Black Creek, uh, that doesn't allow traffic. Uh, it's, it's essentially a multi-use trail now, ADA accessible. Uh, and uh, the goal is to keep it uh, non-motorized except for official purposes, emergency purposes, or maybe during official events. We did, uh, Tina Cutson, obviously this is their property. Uh, the committee really discussed, you know, what, what are the possibilities to allow for motorized access, particularly for people with uh, uh, motor skill deficiencies. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's not wide enough uh, to safely handle both vehicle and pedestrian traffic. Uh, widening it is just not feasible due to potential impacts on the uh, Black Creek uh, and the steep shorelines that are on, on uh, uh, one side of it. Uh, and then both sides as you get closer uh, to uh, Black Creek. And uh, just overall safety concern. So it's really going to uh, remain uh, a uh, multi-use trail for, for biking, uh, hiking, etc. cetera. Uh, so they're going to formalize that with a turnaround uh, and also put in a pavilion perhaps. Zoom back in here. Uh, if you've been back in here, it's a beautiful open view to the river. Uh, so they really want to take advantage of that uh, with a pavilion. There's an existing historic gazebo that will be improved upon, some of the vegetation cut back to improve the view. Uh, internal trails, uh, including an existing one that goes up to what's called Cedar Point Overlook, has a unique ecological environment up there. Uh, so they're going to look to formalize that existing trail. And then there's a water access point that's really going to be more for coming ashore while you're on the Hudson River because of the distance uh, from the parking lot, it doesn't really make sense to, to, to be a put-in location uh, for canoes and kayaks, uh, except for the very intrepid ones that perhaps uh, want to practice their portage skills and uh, carry it all the way down there. Clearly, there's, there's, there's nothing against doing that. So this is actually an existing access point that was part of the original cottage colony. Uh, the bulkhead, uh, the western side of the sheet piling, uh, needs to be reinforced uh, to uh, protect against any sudden failure. Uh, and that whole area would be cleaned up. It's kind of become overgrown, but it's a beautiful view to the confluence of the Black Creek with the Hudson River uh, and can become an official uh, water trail access point uh, through the Hudson River Greenway water trail. Uh, as with all of the parks on the Hudson River, they're influenced by the tides and uh, this is an area uh, where uh, access will be uh, dependent upon, um, upon the tides as well, but could be a great location uh, to come ashore, spend uh, part of the day uh, hiking uh, Black Creek, because once you get beyond uh, the Winding Brook Acres section, it goes into the uh, Black Creek's overall uh, trail connection or, or existing trail. So the idea would be to, to add a, an official trail connection uh, to that. Uh, it'd be uh, a, uh, an official overlook here that looks at the confluence of the river 
you haven't been back there, highly recommend it. It's very beautiful. Uh, put an informational kiosk uh, and then a, a small uh, gravel parking lot. So as I mentioned before, uh, we were out there last year and uh, Cena Cutson's done a great job uh, cleaning up. Uh, you can barely tell uh, what was out there before and it's uh, really starting to become restored back to a uh, natural condition. Uh, and that's just an example of, of the pavilion that uh, may go in. So two other things here with uh, the uh, Black Creek is that the parking lot, they're proposing to expand that uh, to about double its size, improve the circulation, and also add uh, uh, ADA accessible parking spots uh, to that as well. And the uh, entrance on 9W uh, is also proposed to be improved. Right now they kind of have a, a, a single lane entrance and exit, uh, but it's not necessarily marked and we're all in agreement that it does cause some confusion uh, uh, in, in which entrance you should drive in, particularly if you're headed south. So the idea would be to uh, pave over the uh, grassed island uh, in the middle, but then reduce the width of the overall uh, uh, curb cut to reduce the, uh, the amount of, of impervious surfaces. And that would be done in conjunction with DOT uh, since it requires a DOT access permit uh, improvement, and also this would make it uh, uh, come in, basically come into compliance with uh, how a new uh, entrance would be uh, developed. So looking at the safety uh, aspect uh, as well. So that's all I have on um, Black Creek, and I know Heather Blakey is on, and she's available for any questions uh, and if I've missed anything of significant importance that you want to chime in on, Heather, let, let us know. And so if there's any questions on Black Creek, um, uh, uh, we're available. If not, we'll just go over our next step. So as I mentioned before, the public draft, uh, which includes all the existing conditions anal analysis, uh, recommendations, uh, and uh, the implementation plan that's available on the website, along with individual documents that will make it easier to review. Uh, we uh, are going to accept comments through July 17th. Uh, one way to uh, provide the comments is, again, to go to the town website, or go to the project uh, uh, page, and there is a contact information to email your contacts or snail mail uh, your, your comments uh, to uh, Alex Dean, uh, and then the committee will meet again on July 22nd to review the comments and determine if we need to make any revisions to the plan uh, and also prioritize the recommendations. Uh, essentially, you know, if it's an immediate uh, project that should be implemented, intermediate, you know, two or three years or a long term. And again, that's going to be based upon uh, the costs, uh, the availability of funding, uh, manpower, uh, and um, the ability for the town to, to make these investments. And obviously, um, you know, we're at a, a, a kind of uncertain time in terms of funding, uh, so we recognize that, and uh, we'll be looking to prioritize improvements that could be done uh, uh, with um, kind of in-kind services without any significant uh, investment, uh, unless there's grant funding that is available. So we'll be looking for the town board to accept uh, the study as complete in early August. Uh, also in August, uh, the goal would be to, to begin the boundary and topographic surveys of both Freer and Lighthouse Park and the bulkhead evaluation at Freer Park. Uh, the goal there is that uh, we're hoping that the bulkhead is, is stable enough for it to be uh, stabilized and uh, then uh, uh, vegetation uh, planted around the back along with uh, riprap uh, to maintain the life of that that bulkhead. Uh, so we'll see uh, what the results of that are. And then uh, August 26th, uh, the, the Waterfront Advisory Board, which is the main committee that's been uh, leading this project, will kick off the local waterfront revitalization program update, which will allow the town to begin evaluating access improvements for the rest of the roundout as well as the Walk Hill River uh, and a variety of other 
uh, projects that we actually touched on at the last town board meeting. So, and then ongoing, we'll, we'll be evaluating the potential grant opportunities, uh, whether they might be later this year or uh, most likely uh, 2021 uh, for implementation of, of select projects where there needs to be some uh, cost sharing. Uh, and that's uh, all uh, that I have today on this, but obviously I'm open for questions, uh, comments, recommendations, and definitely encourage the public to review the document uh, and provide their comments and questions. Obviously, if we all could get together, we'd be in person right now, um, but unfortunately we're not able to, uh, so we're making the best of this. And uh, I think we'll, we'll still come out with uh, a great plan and we're hoping for uh, some good interaction um, from the public over the next few weeks. So if there's any more questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Matt, thanks so much. Um, this is Heather from Scenic Hudson. Um, I would also kind of piggyback on the implementation and funding comment and, and just point out again that uh, since the Black Creek Preserve is the northern terminus of our kind of collective planned Sean Burroughs Black Creek Trail that um, we are hoping to, um, you know, we have a grant from the EPF, uh, it's an EPF grant from OPRHP, so uh, improvements will go forward and those will also support additional improvements to the John Burroughs Black Creek Trail. So um, those things will be coming down the line and you know, I think COVID's kind of put everything for a little turn, but uh, plan to get that going again. So it's not going to be too far for that end. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Matt Rogers for leading this whole effort um, and and the Waterfront Advisory Board for really great discussions and like extreme dedication to this project. So um, it's it's been a pleasure to work with everybody and the supervisor Harris and uh, all the town board members. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So any more questions? Suggestions? I, I missed part of that, but I, it was the question how, are we going to prioritize by parks or by implement or by specific projects? Was that the question? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, there might, uh, so Scenic Hudson obviously is going to be uh, addressing their implementation. They've actually already, uh, so I think they've secured some funds for Black Creek. Uh, and then with regard to the town projects or the town parks, uh, you know, they'll be individually prioritized for each park. Uh, but then after that, the town, uh, the Waterfront Board of Parks and Recreation uh, can then, uh, based upon funding availability, et cetera, uh, can prioritize improvements uh, at, you know, select parks. So uh, Slatesburg, you know, improving the parking circulation and, and the stalls might, you know, it's a, it's a low-hanging fruit. It's a cost of paint uh, and, some, and some hours to get out there to improve that. Uh, Buying a new dock obviously is not low hanging fruit that can cost $40,000 depending upon you know, what we're looking at. Uh, so that could be a long term one. Uh, cutting back the reeds at Slatesburg Park for uh, safety purposes. Again, that's low hanging fruit that could be prioritized uh, beginning next year. Uh, and then for Freer Park, uh, you know, looking at improving the bulkhead. Uh, paving or, or putting gravel down preferably for the uh, uh, the northern parking lot there and starting to kind of pick away at you know improve improvements of the parking surface uh, and improving the overall stormwater uh, uh, system there uh, could be done you know a uh, step-by-step basis without much uh, investment outside of the town uh, using in-kind services and material so uh, the committee, uh, you know, they've been given the, the task to begin thinking about prioritizing uh, and we'll come into the next meeting, hopefully with an idea of, of that. 
And if there are recommendations that kind of bubble to the surface uh, in terms of, you know, number one priorities, uh, regardless of the park, uh, you know, we'll, we'll include those in the implementation plan as well. But that's a good question. Thank you. I would like to request that the Waterfront Advisory Board and the River Access Group provide recommendations for implementation that they and the town board can review both with the Parks Department, the Parks Commission, and with the Highway Department. We have an open the implementation plan so that our full time employees have milestones to build up to. Right. All of these priorities that are agreed and discussed openly with the town board and are built into the budget and their future plans. Unless we do that, there's just going to be, you know, little pet projects that maybe get done, but many that don't. But I think that what we can do is come together and make a priority during the work day with the full time employees once we have some prioritized recommendations. Agreed. I, I would recommend a similar process that's in the comprehensive plan, you know, where it's, you know, part of your uh, ongoing evaluation of, you know, where investments need to be made and also, you know, should be a front and center during, uh, you know, budget discussions. And then having all of those uh, uh, relevant town board uh, or town departments particularly parks and recreation, highway departments, I know they're involved. Um, and because it's easy to say, all right, we should pave the, uh, or lay down some gravel on the Northern parking lot, but that could obviously take several weeks for coordination. And uh, the goal would be to, you know, have those scheduled out uh, and discussed uh, and funding allocated, um, you know, before summer hits next year. Because uh, more than likely, a lot of these recommendations, you know, just based on the current circumstances, you know, may not be addressed until 2021. Uh, and you're right, having all those departments involved is, is key. Without that, again, it's just a plan that sits on the shelf. Okay. I like that idea and also just have the flexibility and openness if the rain did come along, that we could, you know, attack that because that would be the fast money we would need to gain at that point. So, you know, have the ability to move to a different, you know, phase two somewhere else should a grant opportunity come along. That's right. Yep. We're just trying to do what we can do. We, you know, what we can do. And there's things right. that we can that are going to need a lot of financial backing. Yeah. Right. And, you know, perhaps we can, in the implementation plan too, we can identify kind of the highlight, the ones that aren't likely to require any, you know, supplemental funds. Uh, and those could be the, you know, the, the primary ones that the town focuses on first. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll have the, uh, the committee contemplate that and, and review all the recommendations with that in mind and, and with the goal of having the final draft uh, have a fairly clear roadmap as to you know, what the priority should be with and without funding. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll uh, mute myself. So again, thank you for everybody that's tuned in to watch this. Uh, go on the town website, take a look at it, uh, and send your comments to the town. We look forward to uh, receiving them. And thanks for your time.